Right. This is um, an area that um, not so many people have seen. Some of our visitors are prepared to get very mucky and climb in here, but not all of them by any means. And it's the, the most recent proper dig that we've, uh, we've had. Uh, I'll just put on my laser pointer. So the magna chamber underneath the land next door to the Williamson house site, um, we discovered uh, quite out of the blue and most unexpectedly in uh, April 2018. And we didn't actually finish uh, emptying it out totally as far as we were able to go until uh, February last year. It was a, a, a long haul really. Um, but it's a very interesting little place inside. So let's have a go. Uh, this is the, um, the end of the banqueting hall closest to where we enter from the gash in there. And when we got to the point where we thought we'd pretty much emptied the banqueting hall down to its main floor here, uh, we got a big surprise when we found it went deeper. And uh, we found this deep trench running right across the banqueting hall from one side to the other. Uh, and the deep trench also leading down into it from the gash where you come in. Uh, this point is about six feet below the main floor. A bit inconvenient in one way. And then it goes down steeply there to about eight feet below the main floor uh, at that point there. And um, having got down there, we discovered something we've never seen before, a little rock cut tunnel. That was new to us altogether and quite unexpected. Very nice to see, but it just ended about three feet on uh, with a brick wall, as we thought. Couldn't make any sense of this at all. Puzzled over it for a while. We tried to put a drill through it. You can see a couple of holes there. The drill went one and a half meters into solid brick and didn't come through the other side. So that is one hell of a wall. Um, but after a little more puzzling, we realized that this wall overlaps the opening here. Only by a few inches either side, but it overlaps. Very significant because it means it was built from the other side. It wasn't built inside the opening. So there has to be another chamber beyond. Wonderfully exciting. So we started hacking away in that corner where it only overlaps by a few inches. And we made a small hole. It was incredibly hard going. This is very tough engineering brick and uh, the toughest mortar I've ever come across. We had uh, power tools. We even had a concrete breaker and it was incredibly hard work making any impact on it. And as soon as we made a hole, the spoil from the other side started falling through as it has done everywhere else we've ever been. And it kept on coming through for weeks. And we kept bucketing this stuff up, carting it away, lifting it up to the surface and it kept on coming. We couldn't figure out where it was all coming from. It eventually stopped uh, and bit by bit we made the hole larger. At this point the hole is about big enough so uh, those of us who were brave enough could lie on their back, take your hard hat off, shove an arm with a torch through that hole and uh, get your head through and shine it up towards the roof. And that's what you could see. Absolutely fabulous. Five meters up, there's another arch. This is from looking, lying on your back, straight up there. This is the sandstone wall adjoining the banqueting hall. And there's the start of an arch. And we estimated this must be about 15 feet wide, about the same size as the banqueting hall. And that's what it turned out to be. This is interesting. This looks like a shelf in the rock wall here with a couple of bricks stuck to it. Turns out to be the spring line of a second arch, a lower arch. Um, by this time now we've actually climbed inside, provided a bit more light. And Chris has taken some better quality photographs inside. There's that roof, brick arch, five meters up and an enormous great wall of spoil looking as if it just wants to fall straight down on top of us. We didn't dare breathe when we first got in there. This looked so dangerous, but uh, we made the effort and we made it safe fairly quickly. At this point, the hole is now big enough to climb through, but it took an awful lot of chipping away to make this hole this big. 
Uh, at the moment, it's uh, it's big enough to get through at a crouch. Um, you don't have to go on your hands and knees, but it's certainly not an easy place to get into. Uh, you can see that by this time, we've managed to get a ladder inside there. And this, this is uh, what it looks like inside. Uh, the roof is uh, quite badly damaged. It turns out that what we'd come in around was um, a brick buttress, about five feet square, built from something like 45 feet below ground, right up through the arch of this tunnel and then right up to the surface. And here on the right hand side is a second brick buttress. And there is a pile driven down through the roof of this chamber. That's part of the foundations of the magnet joinery factory that went up about 1970, did an awful lot of damage. And there were more, that's another view of it. There's that pile. I thought it looked like wood when we first saw it. I think now it must be steel, a steel tube, um, but there are others that look different. And as you can see, where it's punched through the roof, it's done a lot of damage. People putting in those foundations wouldn't have known that it was there. We've opened the hole uh, out a little, a little in the area where we climbed in behind the ladder there, um, pulled down a lot of spoil so that it's not a vertical wall and we feel a little bit safer start off with we wonder whether if we had a fall we might be buried or if the hole was covered up and we just couldn't get out but uh, we soon made it safer um just out of interest there that is the end of a great slab of concrete that's been poured down as part of the piling um the people doing that job didn't realize what they were doing and how much concrete they were losing uh tons and tons of it and it spread across the top of the spoil heap um, several tons worth of it, which made life rather difficult for us later. The spoil wasn't right up to the roof in all areas. Uh, further over, uh, we could see the spoil with uh, several feet of clear space above it, uh, under this part of the arch. And that's the reason why we got a ladder in straight away and uh, climbing up the ladder and looking across. This was one of the first things that uh, we saw. Beautiful little sandstone arch serves absolutely no purpose at all but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real little work of art I would say. All these stones are wedge shaped and they, uh, they have lovely chamfered bottom edges they fit together beautifully. Absolutely no reason for it it's just typical Williamson to do things just for the hell of it or to allow his men to do things just to prove what they're capable of. There's another view of it and um, that's the third brick buttress a few feet on in the other direction. The chamber we're boxed into between these three buttresses is actually about 21 feet long, that's all. So quite a small area, in fact. There's another one of the um, piles, only this one is all encrusted with uh, of the debris that it uh, came through. In fact, I now know uh, from only a few weeks ago that this is actually a concrete pile. There is no steel in there. I put a drill through it and it's concrete up to 12 inches in might have some steel rebar inside but the concrete has been poured down a hole that's been augured out and then the concrete has um, had all the surrounding debris just cling to it which is why it looks like that different techniques in uh, piling over the years another view of that lovely arch uh, we really love that thing and um, looking from the same area by the arch you see now that we've enlarged the hole a bit and we started to put up some scaffolding and uh, boarding to make it a bit safer to be in there and to climb up to this uh, higher area. That's looking from right underneath the arch towards the way we come in around this central brick buttress. Five foot that way, five foot the other way. It's no wonder our drill wouldn't go through it. And now we're starting to reduce the level of the spoil in there. It's coming down slowly. Uh, it was one massive job. All the spoil that came down from up here had to be um, lowered down to a much lower level. This chamber turned out to be 6.6 metres high from the top of its roof down to its main floor. So all the buckets had to go across here, uh, be lowered down through that small hole up a steep ramp and then up to uh, with two hoists to get it up to the surface and into the skip. It was a mammoth job. Coming down slowly, a little bit at a time. Um, we also discovered this uh, stone buttress that had been left standing uh, from the right-hand side towards the center of the, um, 
the chamber at this point uh, for some reason. So this little stone arch goes from the, the side wall adjacent to the banqueting hall across to the stone buttress. So it's about half the width of the, the whole chamber. You can't uh, get a proper feel for it in a picture like that though. Coming down further, and we've now discovered a section of the lower brick arch. We knew almost straight away when we came in because we found that spring line of an arch close to the entrance hole that there must have been another arch in here. So this has been originally a double tunnel. The spring line of uh, this lower arch is there somewhere behind this soil that's still sticking to the wall. And when it's um, been destroyed during the building of the, the three buttresses up from the base of this chamber right up to ground level, this section of it has just dropped, fallen on the spoil, but remained looking intact. We took a lot of photographs, we took a lot of measurements, but unfortunately this couldn't be saved. It's not actually fixed to anything, it's just lying there. And as we carried on digging out the spoil, it just disintegrated brick by brick. This pile of bricks here has come from bits of it that have uh, disappeared. But at least we've recorded it, even though we couldn't save it. Now we're going down steadily here, uh, and we've had to construct this um, weird and wonderful scaffolding structure in this space. There's that buttress that sticks out halfway across the chamber. And on this side, behind the boards, uh, is that great mass of concrete hanging uh, right up close to the roof. We don't know what it's stuck to, and we don't know how well it's stuck, and we didn't dare remove the spoil from underneath it in case it broke away and fell on us. It's uh, several tons worth. So what we had to do as we were excavating down was not what scaffolders would normally do. You would normally put scaffolding up from the ground upwards. We had to do things the wrong way around. As we dug down, we started to build the scaffolding structure up here in the roof and gradually work it down and slide these boards in behind and keep the spoil built up high behind those boards uh, to hold back that lump of concrete in case it should drop. If it was to break away, it could only drop a few inches and it couldn't do any serious damage. But that's why the chamber we're stuck with is so much smaller than it should be. It's about half the size, but at least we were allowed to get down here and get all the way down to the floor, which obviously is uh, what we needed to do, find out just how big this is. You can see now how deep it's going. Uh, at this point, we, we haven't reached the bottom. There's still several feet to go. This is looking down from a platform, which is just probably about uh, six feet below the, uh, the top of the roof. Still going down, um, getting closer to the floor now, but there's still more spoil there waiting to be taken out. And quite a job to get this stuff out from there. And at this point, we've now reached the floor. Uh, you could be forgiven for thinking that this is a man-made concrete floor that we've reached here. It's gray and it's very flat. And it just looks like a man-made concrete floor, but it isn't. The quarrymen have stopped quarrying here at this point. You've still got good, solid red sandstone around the walls, but they've reached a layer here, which is something completely different. Uh, I wish I could give you a name for it. It's a sedimentary rock, but it's very soft and it's very flaky. And if you look at it in sunlight, or even in electric light, to be honest, you can see all the sparkly bits in it. So if there are any geologists out there who can tell me what this stuff's called, I'm all ears. Uh, but anyway, it flakes off very smoothly and it's left a lovely smooth floor to this chamber which to all intents and purposes you would have thought was um, concrete but it isn't and it it's, appears to be only a very thin layer if they'd wanted to dig that out they probably could have carried on digging down further and found more good sandstone below um, that is now looking down from above straight on on that floor but it's a bit mucky there's a lot of soil about but it, it is the um, it is the the floor there that we've reached but as usual, uh, Williamson throws more surprises at us. As we dug towards the, uh, the buttress and towards this wall adjoining the banqueting hall, uh, we discovered that there was now a deep trench. Williamson is so full of surprises at every turn, you know, you just can't anything for granted. So this deep trench here went deeper and deeper. And uh, the middle buttress has been built right over the top of it. What we've now learned is that this was a water course. Digging down in that trench, um, the, um, this, this pile of stuff here is 
horrible rubbish mixed with cement that the uh, the middle buttress is sitting on and it's been built right across this trench which is a water course and there's a water gully in the bottom of it the water would have come from the surface um williamson's gardens maybe the uh, roofs of the houses and it would have been channeled through channels in the sandstone down into the top of the gothic arch on the other side of the banqueting hall drop down the gothic arch like a water chute and then across this trench across the floor through that little rock cut opening and then it would have dropped down a couple of feet into this area below the buttress and then it would have gone on down this way over the lip there and then dropped down to a lower level we don't know where it would have gone from there because this buttress is in the way this one is also five foot thick or more because the drill won't go through it but there you can see it again a channel with a water gully in the bottom of it and Chris Isle standing in the bottom there looking a bit mucky and that's him taking a photograph looking up at Ben and straight up towards the roof this might look very confusing to people who have not been in there and don't uh, uh, you know to, to get your bearings is difficult but this is looking straight up at the roof the wall of the adjacent to the banqueting hall is this one the middle buttress is there the brick buttress um there's that pile and there's the left hand buttress and this is all good solid rock below and uh if they decided to carry on digging out they could have just gone on deeper and deeper here but they obviously stopped because they come across that little layer of something quite different which wasn't usable but there you go who knows why they stopped and there's Ben right in the bottom. I think uh, from finding this floor at this point here, which is 6.6 .6 metres below the roof, uh, we've now gone down there about another 15 feet. Sorry to mix the feet and metres, but that's how I remember it. And at this point, uh, Ben was working with a little trowel and it was probably taking him an hour to get half a bucket full out of the bottom of this trench. He was boxed in so tight all around here, he could hardly move. And there really wasn't anywhere else to go. There were some big lumps of stone in the bottom. And uh, we had to drag him out in the end, kicking and screaming. It just wasn't worth trying to get any lower. So I'm afraid that's the point we've got to with that chamber. By uh, February last year, um, we're boxed in at both ends and can't move on because of the damage done by the piles to the brick roof. Uh, so the next step is to try and find out how bad the damage is, to uh, correct it if we possibly can. Um, in, in whatever way we can by digging down from the surface so that we're then able to carry on digging, uh, preferably in this direction, because we think it's going to lead us to the great tunnel that's been eluding us for so many years. But also I think this chamber carries on parallel with the banqueting hall all the way up to the road in the other direction. So if we could bust through in either direction, it would be fabulous. But at the moment we're at a standstill and uh, this is all we can do. So we've had to walk away from this, uh, but it's still uh, a very interesting place to take visitors. And uh, we're actually quite surprised how many of our visitors don't mind crouching down and don't mind getting very wet and muddy to go in there. And they all think it's well worth having viewed it. So that's about it. That's where we're up to right now with that. Uh, that's very, yeah. very enlightening, Tom. Any questions anyone like to ask Tom? Yeah. Yes, Ken? Yep. Ken? 